your sense of community when you're free rolling through the mountains rolling through the valley rolling through paradise with me hello everyone welcome to another episode of small talk well, my guest today is another one of these people with more than one title to his name. He is a lyricist, songwriter, lead vocalist, pro producer at Special Agent Sunshine. He is also a songwriter, lyricist at Bipolar Man, and publisher at Fallon Family Publishing. Time to meet Adam, Adam Fallon. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Adam. <laughs> hey, Nancy, how are you? I'm doing fine. feeling great today. I'm good, thank you. I almost called you Alan, so that's why I stumbled there. <laughs> that's fine. So um, what I'm curious about is what started first of those three titles? Where did you, oops, where did you, where did you just start with that? Well, if you're going to include Fallon Family Publishing, I've had that publishing group since like 1999. Um, and then I just started touring on my own and doing my own solo stuff. Uh, so I used that as a publishing company for years. Um, and then um uh, I mean, the, the bipolar thing, I've had bipolar disorder for 20 years. So, I mean, that's just a thing of mine to put myself out there and put it out in front so that, yeah. like, it's, if anybody wants to talk about it, they know it's not a problem. Um, especially in Sunshine was with my co-writer, Emrock. Uh, I met him last year, and then we just started really, really writing and just establishing a ton of stuff really fast. And then a year to the day that we met, we signed a record deal. So that was that was kind of nice. Very nice. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that's especially the sunshine. That's the the group that uh, we're we're kind of pushing ourselves forward and putting stuff off other. So when did you start singing? Singing? Wow, probably when I was like eleven. Um, I, that would have been just hearing things and repeating them. You know what I mean? Like um, singing Garth Brooks and singing uh, mm -hmm. Eddie Vedder and and things of that nature, where you just listen to the the tone and listen to the muscle memory, and then you just start doing it over and over again, and eventually you just get good at it, right? I'd say that's where I started singing. That's where I started loving it anyway. Oh, very good. Now, I know that you you write pop songs and then you sell them to people. Is that correct? Kind of. We, uh, we're we right now, we've been writing for ourselves to get a new album out and to uh, nice. to put some new singles out. But we, uh, we constantly write stuff that even though we know we're not going to use for ourselves, that we just sit on the back burner. So basically, once we start uh, generating enough um i guess clout or, or popularity within the industry with these few songs we're releasing for us then we plan on just yeah writing and writing and writing and writing for many different people and just never stopping which sounds like fun right that sounds pretty good actually you know i like that uh who came up with the name uh, special agent sunshine well actually before um well me i guess but uh before um before Merrick and I started this incarnation of a band, um, it was uh, my friend Stefan and I uh, were in a version of this band a few years ago, and then it kind of just fizzled. And then I uh, tried to do it up again and then fizzled again. And then so uh, I just always loved the imagery we had for the band and the uh, and the name. So now we're just going forward with it this way with me and Merrick. So it's going right. go pretty good. But yeah, it's, uh, it's actually a, a, the name of a character from the TV show The West Wing that was on an episode one time for like five minutes and um uh, i thought it was a great name so yeah for sure i love the names fans come up with i think it's always so much fun to, to hear what you know how they came about the name right yeah yeah absolutely uh so uh now okay so you, uh, um you said that for a while you you performed solely by yourself yeah so um you know, i was about 22 and i was done school i moved to chicago uh from southern ontario and then i um I moved there and just traveled and toured and did music and just met people and uh, uh, did whatever I could. Yeah, until I was like in my late 20s. And then um, uh, just a bunch of mental health stuff kicked in, kind of took away like 10 years of my life. And um, then I moved here to Vancouver or Victoria because it was like just the warmest place in Canada. I wanted to get back out of America and come back to Canada. Nice. And then um, ever since then, I've been trying to kind of find that writing partner that uh, – Sure. Yeah, that's perfect. And I did last year, so now things are starting to take off. Right, sure. You know, what I find another thing I find interesting, you know, I've interviewed a lot of you musicians and singers, songwriters, and I think they're always such special people who do really great things, you know. And I, I, I never understand how some people become really popular. Other people who are just as talented and don't get their name put out there. And and uh, you know, how does that work? You know? 
So, I mean, that's it. it there, there's a, oh, that's a weighty question. But the, I mean, aside from, you know, a big entity using a lot of money to put it behind you to make people think <laughs> that you're really popular. I mean, that's the thing. And that happens. And then but it, their music will be good because it's written by good people. But at the same point, you can tell that it's a pop artist. You know what I mean? Like it's mm. it's somebody that's being put by the machine out there to push right. this type of music. But generally, somebody that's not that's made it organically because they're them themselves. They write really great music or them themselves. They do really great art. I think people aren't like it's not like people are smart, but people aren't dumb when it comes to recognizing when somebody's really natural with what they're doing you know what i mean it's like watching brad pitt in a movie you know what i mean like that i'm watching a character i'm watching brad pitt one because he does what he's doing does you know, like you just you just you just see it you know what i mean you mm -hmm. just feel it like like leonardo dicaprio or or, or any of the, the other big actors or any writer you know what i mean like stephen king i mean he doesn't take a long time to write his books but it's just his thought process and his feeling and his being that comes through you know it's the same kind of thing with music like um most people will fall in love with the tone of the lead singer, like the exact tone of the voice of the lead singer. That's why you'll find bands that have like really low vocalists, but are still really, really popular because there is a lot of people that like that low tone that, and that baritone kind of sense. But there's a lot of people that don't, right. but it doesn't really matter because like, if you go statistically nine out of 10 people don't like your music. If you like talk about everybody on earth, right? Yes. So that's nine. That's still 9 billion people. So that's still like, like 820 million people that will love your music you know what i mean so, <laughs> so it's, a, it's it's a real relative way of looking at it but really it comes down to why certain people are and why certain people are because i think there's just some people that have it you know what mm -hmm. i mean in the way that they are just 100 percent doing what's real inside them and they're saying and writing what's real and inside them so that immediately resonates with other people it's like going on a date with somebody where you don't have to think twice about them having arterial motives about what their their goal is right you just have to you just have a great conversation and you kind of be with that person because you both recognize on that same level that you have that aura that's close to each other. I think that emanates off of good people that create good art and people like their appreciators that know what they like to appreciate when it comes to them in an easy and honest form from somebody. They can feel it and remember it and then they get a emotional connection to that band and then it's it, it's it's over. Yeah, point. for sure. Yeah, that's true. That's it's kind of interesting, isn't it? The whole process, you know, how it works and how it doesn't. Uh, another thing I'm wondering about, like, con con considering when you started, first started, you know, going out there, whatever, um, has the music industry itself changed a lot over time? Well, I mean, if you're going to talk like just in big bubbles, it enormously has. I mean, I started doing stuff in the late 90s, early 2000s when I started pursuing it. And I mean, obviously, that was just the shift of MP3s and things like that of that nature. Like, I remember Windows 95 when it came out, there were people that were like, oh, this isn't going to last. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Whatever you say, bud. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, but then the same people were said the same things about MP3s. Uh, when Napster came out, and absolutely changed the entire industry. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. When was the last record store you went to? You know what I mean? Or, or I, not to buy records, but I mean like CDs. You know what I mean? Like a and now you can get everything or... online, right? Like uh, you can yeah, like absolutely. Spotify or... Yeah, yeah, for sure. Is like... But I mean, the business is kind of cyclical in a way that it it, it it has its ups and downs and it'll keep going back and forth. Like in the 80s, the late the rock was the big thing and then it's sampling was a huge deal in the late 80s, early 90s and then it switched to like, you know, emo rock and then it went through a alternative phase and then went to major major all pop everywhere bands and then it got back to rock and then back to emo again and then like all transitioned again and then now hip-hop's really big the sampling is all the kind of rage it'll 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 go back it'll go back again it'll just keep sure. it and uh I don't know if I answered your question. Yeah, but, yeah, for sure. Well, it does. You know, it, I again, I find it all very fascinating. You know, um, now have you published any uh, CDs at this time? Oh well, I mean, m me personally, I've put out like seven albums uh, since uh, two thousand and a greatest since album. Um, but then I also, right now with this group, um, we're just putting out our first single, um, January twenty seventh, our first album uh we have a series of albums coming out this year so basically our first album is going to be a double album it's going to be two volumes mm -hmm. and the first volume comes out uh march 10th 
Okay. And then the next one will probably come out in the summer. And then we'll probably come out with another full album beginning of next year. Right. Uh, we just have a ton of music that we need to get out. Yeah, for um, sure. But, but other than that, um, no, uh, we haven't released anything else yet. We're still okay. working on all that. Okay. I'm going to have to have you back on once you've got uh, some things out there and talk about those. Yeah, issues, right? I would love that. That would be wonderful. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. Uh, now, um, you said you signed, you're signed with a, a record company? Did you mention? Yeah, so we're on um, a, a label called Big Records out of uh, Vancouver, and I then uh, yes, um, and then we also get distribution uh, through uh, Sony Orchard, which is a good corporation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I just you know found out accidentally about Big Records because I interviewed one of their one of the people that had signed with them without even realizing at that point. Mm -hmm. So and then I introduced interviewed the mark uh, the owner Mark, and. I think it's a really great thing. What I like about what they do is whatever you as a musician want or need or looking for, they will try to fill that for you, right? Yeah, absolutely. They do a lot of clerical stuff, the stuff I really don't, yeah. don't want to do. Um, but it's great. Uh, it's great. You know, there's, there's, there's pluses and minuses. I mean, I, I, it'd be nice to have a label that just handed me a lot of money and then did all the work for me. I mean, that sounds great. Um, but it's nicer to, in the long run, own all the, I own everything, right? I own all the graphic art. I own all the imagery. I own all the, the name of the band. I own everything to do with it. So right. you can walk away at any time, but they pay for everything out of pocket. Uh, it's, so it's yeah. a trade-off right away that you have to accept. Uh, how many members are uh, with uh, Special Agent Sunshine? Well, uh, actually, there's probably, there's two there's myself and then my writing partner, Amrock, and we write and produce everything and uh, bring in studio musicians if we have to, if we can't play the instrument. Um, but as a group and a band, um, it's, it's, uh, I'm not putting anything together right now to play live shows. Okay. I'm going to wait till stuff um, take off digitally and really push us to have to do live shows. Mm -hmm. It's just an expense right now that I'm just not interested in if I don't need to, to, to worry about it. Yeah. Um, but the goal is to actually use digital characters to represent the rest of the band. Oh. So we'll have members of the band, but whether they stay or don't or, or, or change, the four members will be the same cartoon images <laughs> um, of each of the, the members. So yeah. uh, when we play live shows, we're going to use uh, video screens that will kind of shoot through us. Right. Um, and you'll, it'll show the digital characters and stuff, uh, as opposed to actually seeing pictures of the drummer or of the bass player or something like that. Well, I haven't seen anything like that. So I, I think that's a great idea. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it should be fun. It makes it, yeah. it makes it easier and it makes it a little more artistically intricate, I think, to right. create all that kind of stuff. Right. Still working on it. Now, you said you've been in the U.S., right? Right. Touring. And so is there... For you personally, did you find a difference from being a, performing here in Canada to the U.S.? Uh, performing, no. I mean, crowds are kind of the same. Um, but uh, I, just society-wise, it's definitely very different. I mean, I lived in Chicago most of the time, but then I also lived in uh, New York and Indianapolis and San Diego. Um, and, and I mean, there's New York. Or, the United States is great. There's amazing people and wonderful, nice people everywhere. There's just more idiots just because there's more people like there's <laughs> idiots in Canada. You know what I mean? There's just of more course. of them because there's more, there's just more people in the States. Yeah. Yeah. So you just get more idiots and more idiot stuff yeah. uh, that you don't hear about as much here in Canada. But the, I mean, the weather, the options for the where you can go weather wise mm -hmm. is kind of great in the States. Um, Definitely. You can go to Hawaii and still be in the States. Right. So it's. Yeah, it's for sure. But I mean, Victoria has got a lot different from Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah no yeah it's a good example but it's definitely yeah yeah i think it's all great uh i'm just trying to think if i did i miss uh anything is there anything that you want me to to ask that i haven't done <laughs> you know i don't i want I think to so uh, i mean i'm pretty uh easy whatever you like to ask uh you know we got the new single coming out the 27th of january uh march 10th the album is going to come out um and then in between there i'm just going to start releasing uh, videos for the upcoming album coming out on YouTube and uh, just post, 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 sell merch, that kind of stuff. Great. And like I said, I'll have you back on. Um, um, we'll set that up at a later date. Um, but in the meantime, just stay on camera and I'm just going to say goodbye to the audience. 
So um, everybody, you've been listening to uh, Adam Fallon, and he's talking about um, being a performer with um, Special Agent Sunshine and uh, singer songwriter, singer lyricist. I have trouble with some words sometimes. <laughs> and, <laughs> bipolar man. I hope you enjoyed his interview. I sure did. And what, as I said to him, he will be back on at some point. So hopefully uh, you'll be watching again, uh, everybody. So take care and thank you for watching and peace out. <laughs> Bye guys. Thank you. A sense of community to the wax a place to be. A sense of community where you're free. Rolling through the mountains, rolling through the valley, rolling through paradise with me. It's multicultural, you're sure to see it all. Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see. Come party in the park, go dancing after dark. Chilliwack's the place to be, you'll see.